Hey folks, David Molnar here. Welcome back to the free video series on Aperture. In this lesson, we're gonna be talking about what is exposure and how it relates to Aperture, how Aperture fits in. So first of all, when I say exposure, I'm not talking about any sort of like indecent exposure or anything crazy like that. I am simply talking about the brightness of an image. When you boil it down, exposure is the brightness of an image. So the technical definition or my defini definition of exposure is an image that is not too bright or an image that is not too dark based on what you as the photographer thinks it should be. Okay, so what that means is that you and I could have different opinions on the brightness or exposure of an image. Let me break it down for you and show you an example. Let's take a look at a silhouetted image that I took of my pregnant wife, my cute little pregnant wife and, a, and my two um, sons. All right, this is a gorgeous silhouetted image. The sky is on fire. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful sunset. But my wife and sons are a silhouette. They're very dark. Now you might think this image is too dark but I think it's just right, just perfect. The exposure is the exact way that I intended this image to be, okay? So if you think it's too dark, um, I'm the photographer and I think it's correct. So the correct exposure is what I think it is, not what the rest of the world thinks, it's what I think, all right? Let's take a look at another extreme example. All right, so this image is, uh, I, I have to be honest, I didn't take this image. This is an image my wife took of me holding my son a couple days, or maybe even the day he was born, I don't remember. But if you notice, this image is very, very bright. It's backlit, there's lots and lots of light flooding into the image. It's a very backlit, very, um, bright image, okay? And you might think that this image is too bright, but it is exactly the way that we intended it to be. My wife took the picture, I probably set the settings for her. This is exactly the way we wanted it to be. It's a little bit overexposed, but intentionally we wanted that light to flood in and give this bright, white, beautiful, dreamy looking image, okay? Now these are two extreme examples of extremely different exposures. In fact, both of the images were backlit, meaning most of the light was coming from behind the subject's head, all right? We could have made a silhouetted image in both of those images, okay? The one where I was holding my son, we could have made that image silhouetted if we wanted to, and you just see my profile completely black as a silhouette, but, we wanted that image to be a bright, happy, kind of overexposed looking image. That was what our intentions actually were, okay? And the silhouetted image that you saw first, the sunset, my cute little pregnant wife, that was very intentional as well. So those are two extreme examples of how exposure could be drastically different. And so here's kind of a little hint. Your camera cannot guess what you're thinking in your head. That's why it's so, so important to take manual control of your camera so that you can take the exact image, the exact exposure that you see in your head and translate that into beautiful photographs. All right, I made an entire course about this. It's called Master Your Camera. And to talk a little bit more about exposure and how it works with Aperture, I wanna actually show you a lesson from that real course, uh, Master Your Camera. So let's go ahead and jump in over to that lesson now. So let's talk about you know, the different ways that you can get a correct exposure and kind of talk a little bit about you know, what a correct exposure is. So what's really amazing, this is an example I like to use, a correct exposure is like a glass of water, okay? A full glass of water. None of you negative people with glass half empty stuff, right? This is a full glass of water. Now what's interesting is just you know, according to what we were just saying, you know, I'm saying this is a, glass, a full glass of water, and you might say, well, actually, I like to fill my glasses up here, right? Because that's how you interpret a full glass. And some of you guys who live too dangerously, probably, could fill your glass all the way up to the brim. That's the way that you live life, you know? Like, that's cool, like, that's fine if that's the way you do things. Either way, right? Like, a full glass of water could be here, 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 whatever. But let's just agree right now to, to disagree or agree or whatever, way we should agree to agree, that this is a full glass of water, okay? You might think it's here or here, but let's just say this is a full glass of water. So the interesting thing is that you can create, you can fill up a glass of water in lots and lots of different ways. For example, let's go ahead and pour this glass out. Do you see the way I poured that? It's pretty incredible. I'm just, just saying, I practiced that a whole lot. All right, so 
There is multiple combinations, infinite probably combinations of ways that you could fill up a glass of water. But let's look at example one. I'm gonna open up this faucet all the way to full blast, all right? Full blast. And it's gonna fill up this glass of water as fast as freaking possible, right? And as long as I shut it off at the appropriate moment, we now have a full glass of water. Look at that, there's a full glass of water there, right? We filled that up really as fast as that faucet could possibly fill it up, right? We filled up the glass of water fast. Would you agree? Okay, cool. Um, so let's take a look at glass number two. We, we may, let's call this glass A and we'll call this glass B, cool? We could create a slow trickle of water, maybe not even that much, right? Just a slow little trickle, okay? This is a slow trickle. The other glass would have already been full by now, right? Right? Hey, while we're waiting, I've got, an, I've got a joke for you. What's Bruce Lee's favorite drink? What? Okay, sorry. All right, so back here. We're just waiting for this. We're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. It's taking forever. Maybe we could even fast forward this part. I don't even know. But it's taking a long time to fill up this glass of water. A really long time. Getting kind of, whew, getting kind of thirsty here. Look at that. We have a full glass of water. Isn't that crazy? This one splashed a little bit more. And maybe they're not perfect, but they're pretty close, right? So we have glass of water A, and we have glass of water B and they are both full glasses of water. You guys might be thinking like, okay, great, that, yeah, you filled up glasses of water like two different ways. But this is exactly the way that like, you know, a correct exposure is, is just like a full glass of water, okay? And you can fill up a glass of water in multiple different ways. Those are two extreme examples. We filled up the glass A really fast, we filled up glass B really slow. Well, it's the exact same way when you're letting light come in through your lens in your camera, right, and exposing your sensor, right? You can fill up a correct exposure, like a glass of water, in an infinite combinations of fast or slow. And so the way it works is when we're blasting water like this, what's actually happening is, is that your faucet is actually allowing a large size hole, you know, to be open. And so what's happening is, because you have a large size hole, more water is flowing through the faucet, right? So it's a larger size hole, water is flowing through that faucet faster, therefore it doesn't take as much time. This might seem obvious, like, and so good, like hopefully it's feeling really obvious to you. And so what happens if you make that faucet, if you make that hole in your faucet smaller? Well, it does a very, very slow trickle, right? A very slow trickle of light, and it takes a much, or, sorry, of water, and it takes a much, much longer duration or amount of time to fill up that glass. But at the end of the day, right, both glass A and glass B are both full. Well, when you're trying to get a correct exposure, which is relevant to what you think, your interpretation of what a correct exposure should be, right, you can fill up glass A or glass B, or you can fill up a glass of water in multiple different ways. So when you're creating a, when you're trying to take a picture and get a correct exposure, which is not too bright and not too dark based on what you want it to be, you could, you could take that picture, you could fill up that exposure with light through the hole that's in your lens, right? You could fill up that exposure like a glass of water, fast or slow or anywhere in between, right? So the way that a camera works is you have a hole Okay, and we're gonna talk about all about these, you know, these, these you know, fancy terms like aperture, shutter speed, ISO, depth of field, all this stuff, right? But right now, I just want you to understand this basic concept that right now, there's a hole in your lens, okay? And that hole is actually, you know, different, you can make it different sizes. You can make it really small or really large, okay? That's actually technically called aperture. We're gonna talk about that extensively in, in just a little bit, right? But, if you have a large size hole, then you do not need as much time to fill up your exposure with light. So you can do a shorter duration of time, right? And as long as you, you know, do, turn off the time at the appropriate moment, you're gonna have a correct exposure. And inversely, if you have a small hole, 
right? Then you're gonna need a lot of time because you have a small hole, not as much light is coming through your lens, exposing the sensor that's in the background, right? So you're gonna need more time for that. All right, hope you enjoyed that lesson from our Master Your Camera course. So just like we were talking about in that faucet illustration, aperture is the size of the hole. So you notice when the hole is larger, a lot more water can come through a lot faster, right? And when that hole or that aperture is smaller, it takes a longer time to fill up that glass of water. But aperture is one of the three main factors that go into taking uh, control of your camera and creating a correct exposure. So aperture is the size of the hole and it's one of those three factors. All right, so now to go a little bit deeper down the rabbit hole of aperture, in the next lesson, we're gonna be talking about f-stops.